A glorious sunny evening close to the city of London, close to the M25. We're in Essex tonight and the home of the joint league leaders. What a night of Sunshine Speedway we have lined up for you here at the Arena Essex Raceway. Lakeside Hammers, who've made a fantastic start to the campaign after struggling last year. They're going well and they're looking to put one over the world famous aces from Manchester here at the Arena Essex Raceway tonight. 15 heats of Elite League Speedway coming up, and this could go the distance. Lakeside Hammers and Bellevue Aces, and it's live from the Arena Essex Raceway. Hi there, good evening, welcome along to Arena Essex. Beautiful sunny evening, that's the most important thing to say. We're finally getting our season underway, Kelvin Tatum here at the uh, Lakeside Hammers tonight, who have made a cracking start to the season. Yeah, absolutely. They've had a terrific start. Uh, they've been winning at home and they've picked up a vital win away from home at Leicester as well. So, yeah, encouraging signs for the home team. And Bellevue come here after a difficult start. They haven't had a home so far, have they? They've only had the, the three away meetings. They've won two of those. So they'll be desperate to get amongst the points here this evening. Yeah, Bellevue with three away meetings under their belt. Their first home meeting at the National Speedway Stadium will be a week tonight, next Wednesday. Uh, Bellevue against Swindon at the National Speedway Stadium. So that is the 11th of uh, May, next Wednesday night. That is going to be a huge night for Bellevue Aces, their first home meeting. Lakeside, this time last year, Kelv, Lakeside had already lost a barrel load of home meetings. Yeah. It was almost, see, they could have had their end of season due this time last year. <laughs> exactly, yeah. Um, tough to say, but true. Uh, the fact is, as they had that horrible run that really did affect them, but they've got off to a much better start this time around. I do believe that Bellevue are in a false position. They've only raced three times. They are a powerful outfit, and I'm sure they will make progress up the league table. Yeah, they do look uh, strong, Bellevue. The pre-season uh, experts were saying that yeah. Bellevue will be right up there alongside the likes of the Paul Pirates, but Lakeside Hammers have made a good start. Joint league leaders with Wolverhampton, who, incidentally, are at Paul tonight, and we'll keep you updated with that as well. Score flashes throughout the uh, course of the evening. Right, let's take a look at the teams doing battle tonight. We start with the Lakeside Hammers. And the skipper of the Hammers here at the Arena Essex Raceway is the Swedish Grand Prix star and World Cup winner, Andreas Jonsson. And he leads the way at number one. Piotr Swiderski, back in British Speedway, rides at number two, has done a nice job for the Hammers so far this season. Lewis Bridger, former Great Britain World Cup rider, back in the sport after self-imposed exile, rides at number three. Richard Lawson, back from illness, rides at number four. Kim Nilsson, the Swede, goes at five. And the two reserves, the draft riders at reserve, Robert Mir, back in the sport after a year out. He knows this track very well. And Lewis Kerr, back from serious injury, he rides at number seven. Kelv, who's your lakeside man to watch? I've gone with Richard Lawson, Nigel. He's a rider that's underrated. He started the season extremely well. Very impressive scores early doors. He's had some illness, as you've mentioned, and had to miss a couple of meetings, but subsequently has scored plenty of points for his Premier League side, Glasgow. And I fully expect him to be amongst some big points here this evening. Yep, a tough side to beat, Lakeside, but if anybody can beat them round here, it could be Bellevue Aces. And the skipper of the Aces is Scott Nichols, the captain, plenty of experience, seven times British champion. He goes at number three in the lineup tonight. Riding at number one, the Slovenian Grand Prix star Matti Zegar. Two is Max Frick, talented young Australian, good rider. Richie Worrell goes at number four. 
and the rest of the Aces line up with Craig Cook at number five, who, incidentally, it's been announced today, will also double up now with Peterborough Panthers in the Premier League. So his diary is going to be filling up, that's for sure. And down at reserve, Joe Jacobs back in the sport after a year out. And Stevie Worrell, who could be a key man down in the elite draft reserve position. Kelvin, your Aces man to watch. Well, it's Craig Cook, Nigel. He finished the season last year like a house on fire. He was instrumental in the Bellevue Aces reaching the grand final and pushing the Paul Pirates right to the end of the, uh, the season last year. He's uh, a rider that also very nearly won the British final last year. If it hadn't have been rerun, I would suggest that he would have been the British champion. Super rider. I expect him to be going great guns this evening. Yeah, and he'll do him good as well, getting extra meetings now with Peterborough in Absolutely, the uh, Premier yeah. League in the UK. It hasn't worked out from in Poland and a lack of meetings with Bellevue as well until now, because they're going to be busy in Manchester on their new home circuit from now on, I'm sure. Right, continuing the build-up to tonight's action here between the Hammers and the Aces, here's Chris Louie in the pits. Thanks, Nigel. Yeah, I'm joined trackside by Scott Nichols from the Aces and Richard Lawson from the Hammers. Scott, if I can come to you first... It's been a great start for the Aces. You haven't got a home track yet, but um, well, so uh, ah, you know. But you know, it's like once once you get a few laps out of the way, we still get back into it. We know Lakeside's a tricky little place, and they're good here. But uh, we come here looking for the win, and that's what we intend to do. You say it's tricky, but uh, the Aces have got one or two riders in their camp that probably like this circuit. Yeah, definitely. I mean, Cookie comes here for his first time. We know he's. Uh, adapts quick and uh, um, this place will suit him so uh, yeah we definitely got some riders capable of doing it in our side we know they have well so I'm sure it'll be a close match but uh, we want to come away with the points thanks Scott good luck thank you and Richard it's been a fantastic start for Lakeside not everybody's favourites pre-season but um, been a very solid start for you guys joint top of the table yeah we came in as underdogs basically and I think you know that benefited us there was no pressure on us but uh, I think we always knew what we were capable of and uh, yeah it's been a good start and it's been a good start for you as well. You're, you're in that sort of difficult position, really doubling up, sharing the position with Eddie Kennett, but you've started the season so well that uh, you've just forced your way into that position permanently almost. Yeah, it's worked out that way, but, uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's been a dream start for me. It's been going good in, in the Elite League and Premier League, so uh, if I can just keep that going, I'll be happy. Some great results, but it's been a, a month just about since you were here at um, Arena Essex Raceway, so uh, not going to be too rusty tonight. I mean, it's not ideal, but, uh, you know, we've all done a lot of laps around here and we all know what to do, so um, I, we're, we're pretty confident. Like you said earlier, Bellevue are good away, but uh, I think we should have enough in the bag. That's great stuff. Thank you, Richard. Track conditions are uh, pretty much ideal. The sun, a bit of a problem as you come into turn three, uh, but I think that's probably going to have just about gone by heats two or three. And, uh, yeah, it looks good. The outside's ripped up. Uh, it's going to be a, a, a dirt line later on. A little bit dry for my liking. Maybe we'll see the water cart out early on, but uh, no, it looks like a fair racetrack. I think we're in for a good night. Thanks, Chris. Yeah, Kelvin, let me just ask you as well about the lack of meetings for Bellevue. Only three league meetings so far. The rest of the boys, the, you know, the, the, the whole team, haven't really done a lot. Poland, Sweden, that's only just getting underway. Yeah, exactly. Uh, so they've not had a lot of racing. Will that have an impact within the camp, do you think? It's possible, certainly. You know, clearly it's made an impact on Craig Cook because he's taken up another role with the Peterborough Panthers. Um, there's not, you know, early season, you're dead keen to get racing, so it can be frustrating if you haven't, uh, if weather can uh, particularly play its part. But uh, it could do, but um, I just sense that they've got enough quality in their side to it not to affect them too much. Riders are ready, they're out there, raring to go. So are we, let's go racing. Speedway promises to be. Don't forget our Twitter at Sky Speedway. We ran a poll on our Twitter feed earlier today asking you uh, who wins. Heat one. 
What will it tell us? Swiderski off the inside in blue, Max Frick goes off gate two in yellow and black for Bellevue, Andreas Johnson off gate three in red, and Matty Zegar, and there's a little bit of controversy creeping in already well. between the two Grand Prix boys. The star marshal having to get involved here, Zegar's not moving, um, but uh, quite clearly there's a bit of gamesmanship going up on the start line Very close indeed, Andreas Johnson parking right up against gate four, two big stars on the outside, could be a bit of hand pass there. Yep, winding each other up, no doubt. Going into that first turn, it's a good start for the Hammers from Swiderski. He's got that advantage. Now, coming through into second, is Frick, and uh, Zegar is relegated to the back here with Jonsson third, but Jonsson is going to try the inside cut and oh. makes that superbly. Lovely. Home track knowledge working superbly for the Hammers. A clever cut at the inside, and the Hammers are on a 5-1. Brilliant start from Swiderski off gate one. Really did fire himself to the first corner. Frick then got the better of Jonsson, cutting out of turn two on the opening lap, but as soon... A smart ride from Andreas Johnson up the inside as they completed the opening lap. Has got the two hammers to the front. Looking good out in front. Zagar, well, disappointingly for him, he's out the back. But Swiderski and Johnson dominating heat one. Yeah, Piotr Swiderski, the pole back in British Speedway, and has done a fine job for the hammers so far this season. The former Peterborough Hipswich man goes into turn three and four for the final time time in the first race of the night and it's a perfect start for the Hammers. The joint table toppers have got off superbly here. It was a lovely switch from Jonsson to cut up the inside making all his home track knowledge count yeah. and maybe, just maybe the race rusty aces paying the price in heat one. Well possibly, although they chose to take two and four Nigel, then that was quite a confident move I would suggest. Um, that gave the inside gate to the home team and they took full advantage of it. Um, maybe one or two rides just to get bike set up sorted out but so uh, the Hammers have got off to a good start there Swiderski the winner with Jonsson second Max Frick was third and Zegar at the back it's a 5-1 in favour of Lakeside Swiderski from the gate but Jonsson with a very clever switch up the inside to give the Hammers the maximum advantage uh, we see it again Jonsson lifting a little bit too hard to the first corner but he does get the better of Zegar superstar from Swiderski on the inside He's talented round the inside, he knows how to ride it. Frick then gets himself up into second place, but uh, Johnson shows a lot of composure, doesn't panic. Frick then just runs a little bit right, wide in the bottom corner, and Johnson is able to take advantage. The first corner again, Swiderski dominates it, no problems at all. Frick runs wide. Johnson, you could see, he just hesitated as he went down the back straight there, chops to the inside, gets the better of the Australian, and fires himself into second place. Comfortable 5-1 and heat one to the home team. Yeah, good ride by Johnson to join the race with us, Swiderski. What about the track conditions away from the start? Chris Louie. Yeah, pretty much as I expected, Nigel, I've got to say, um, the start line's pretty even. I think the inside gates, actually, to me, do look an advantage at the moment. Um, gate two just has a little bit more grip than the other three, but... Uh, Track condition-wise, it is a little bit slick. I mean, they were queuing up around the inside. Everyone to be around the kerb. AJ, Andreas Johnson, uh, was patient there. He just took his time entering turn three on lap one and uh, made a steady corner around the inside. Knew he needed to come up the inside uh, coming out of turn four. But, um, no, I, I think conditions are, are as we expected. As far as uh, Bellevue taking two and four in the first race, maybe they wanted one and three in four of the last five programme rides. I think that could be an advantage later on. Chris, here we go with heat number two, and it's good to see the sunshine out here at uh, Arena Essex, who have ridden more than uh, other clubs in the Elite League. They've had a good run of home meetings here, and uh, the highlight of which was a fantastic win against the Paul Pirates. But maybe, just maybe, Paul aren't the in invincibles that many thought, as they were torn apart by Wolverhampton on Bank Holiday Monday at Mon Green, and those sides meeting again tonight down at Wimborne Road. We'll have updates for you as and when. Joe Jacobs off the inside here for Bellevue. Robert Mia, good to see him back on a bike after a year out. He goes off gate two in red. Uh, going off gate three in yellow is Steve Worrell and Lewis Kerr. Uh, on the outside gate in the blue helmet colour. That's your lineup for heat number two. Stevie Worrell in gate three, watched by brother Richie Worrell. The twins are in action for Bellevue here tonight. I'm sure I'm going to get them mixed up. I'm, I'm absolutely convinced of it. But there's no doubt that Steve Worrell is a bit of a star down in the elite draft rider position and a rider that's more than capable of picking up double figures. Um, yeah, there he is. He's coming out of gate three and he'll be looking to get off to a fast start. Joe Jacobs is on the uh, inside for the, uh, the Bellevue Aces and he'll be hoping to uh, reproduce a sort of start that Swiderski um, was able to produce in heat one. The Hammers, uh, they've been a little bit in, in and out at uh, six and seven, but uh, 
I know that uh, one or two of the boys actually did some testing earlier today that they'll be hoping works out for them right now. Here we go with heat number two then, going into that first turn. It's a good gate from the uh, lakeside man in red. That's Robert Mia as Kerr gets shoved down. Now the challenge is on with Steve Worrell is there and also Joe Jacobs in the mix as well. But the lead early on here is with Robert Mia and challenging through Lewis Kerr, charges through in blue. Lakeside on a 4-2 right now. This will do them just nicely as Steve Worrell takes up the challenge with Mia, the uh, leader in this one. Very close indeed. Robert Mia made a good uh, start there from gate two. He's running wide and now Worrell has made the best of it and uh, very calmly uh, has got himself to the front. Lewis Kerr has uh, worked hard to get himself into third place. But I've got to say that Steve Warren has ridden a really smart race there. He didn't panic at all on the opening lap and a half and has now come to be out in front looking good. Yeah, super ride from Steve Warren. He's a class act as a reserve in the Elite League. He's better than that for sure. And it's only a matter of time before he goes up into the top five, no doubt about it. Steve Worrell then, he's going to take the chequered flag for Bellevue. It was a lovely move from Worrell, just nipped up the inside, clever use of the inside line. Sure good was. ride from Kerr to get the better of Jacobs early on as well. But a share of the spoils and a good ride by Stevie Worrell there. Yeah, nice ride. I like the way he didn't panic. He'd seen uh, the move from AJ in the first race. Got to say that he worked that inside line really nicely and was able to take advantage of Robert Mayer just moving off the inside line. Nice ride. Yep, great ride from Stevie Worrell. Second place was Robert Mayer. Third was Lewis Kerr with Joe Jacobs at the back on that occasion. It's a three-all, and that means after a couple of heats here at Lakeside, it's the Hammers 8, Bellevue 4. Yeah, good stuff, and I've got to say that Steve Worrell has uh, done his job there for the Bellevue Aces. Good start initially from Robert Mia, gets uh, himself well to the front. Lewis Kerr on the outside, just having a bit of tussle there with Joe Jacobs initially. Second time of asking, see again, Robert Mia makes uh, a good start from gate two. Hits the front there, Lewis Kerr running a little bit too wide. Richie Worrell, Steve... You would do it, Steve Worrell there, riding well, really well, up the inside, takes a lap just to figure it out, doesn't panic at all, and then gets himself well and truly amongst the action, super ride there. Robert Mir from this point probably felt that he would have gone on to win the race, but it's not the case, and Worrell picks up the three points. Yeah, nice ride from Steve Worrell, let's get some reaction now with Chris Louie. Yeah, I've got the race winner here with me, Steve. Uh... Not the best of starts, but sort of a, just a, a patient, calm opening couple of laps and going away to the front. Yeah, gate three, I think it's a little bit um, slick. I couldn't, I couldn't find a, one single bit off it what I thought was acceptable, really. Um, but like I say, just steady away and managed to fight my way through. Is the uh, sun a problem coming out of turn two because it's sort of almost directly into your eyes? Um, not that I can remember. <laughs> I think when you're concentrating on where you're going, rather, like if it was in front comfortably, then it'd have probably been a problem, but... I was too busy messing around to be thinking about that. Track condition's pretty slick. Um, it's a little bit dry as well. Can you see it making a dirt line or not? I can, yeah, because there's, there's quite a bit loose on the inside that will move out. I mean, it, I was getting a little bit of a pull then as I, as I went wide, but maybe that's, that's the setup I've got. I'll have to, to look into that a little bit to, to try and get it to work. Great ride, well welcome. All right, thank you. Cheers. Yeah, nice-looking ride there from Steve Worrell. Now they'll be uh, chuffed with that because down at reserve, of course, a reserve can take up to seven rides, so it can play a huge role in a meeting. And we've already seen that on t several occasions this season where r r riders like Adam Ellis picking up go, big, big three. points down at six and seven. So we go on to heat number three here. This is Craig Cook in the yellow and black helmet colour, one man who hasn't done a lot of meetings. He's got a big date this Saturday, mm. rides in the Grand Prix qualifier at Kings Lynn. 16 riders at the Adrian Flux Arena doing battle on Saturday night at Kings Lynn. Forecast good for that as well. Uh, seven go through to the next stage of the World Championship in the bid to be a GP rider next year. We wish Craig Cook well for that. Nielsen's off the inside in blue. Cook goes off gate two. Lewis Bridger goes off gate three in red. And Scotty Nichols is off the outside in the white helmet colour. Edward Kennett is part of the uh, Lakeside Hammers squad. Misses out tonight, but here supporting the boys and uh, offering his uh, backing, which is good to see when he's not actually in the side. Absolutely, yeah, he's been up here once or twice and uh, he's riding very well for Rye House as well and his form is excellent for them uh, alongside Andrea Sean in six and seven. So we go on to heat number three here. This is Craig Cook in the yellow and black helmet colour, one man who hasn't done a lot of meetings. He's got a big date this Saturday, mm. rides in the Grand Prix qualifier at Kings Lynn. 16 riders at the Adrian Flux Arena doing battle on Saturday night at Kings Lynn. Forecast good for that as well. 
Uh, seven go through to the next stage of the World Championship in the bid to be a GP rider next year. We wish Craig Cook well for that. Nielsen's off the inside in blue. Cook goes off gate two. Lewis Bridger goes off gate three in red. And Scotty Nichols is off the outside in the white helmet colour. Edward Kenneth is part of the uh, Lakeside Hammers squad. Misses out tonight, but here supporting the boys and uh, offering his uh, backing, which is good to see when he's not actually in the side. Absolutely, yeah, he's been up here once or twice and uh, he's riding very well for Rye House as well and his form is excellent for them. Uh, alongside Andreas Johnson there, well for Rye House as well and his form is excellent for them. Uh, alongside Andreas Johnson there. Interesting. Offering his uh, backing, which is good to see when he's not actually in the side. Absolutely, yeah, he's been up here once or twice and uh, he's riding very well for Rye House as well and his form is excellent for them. Uh, alongside Andreas Johnson there. Interesting. Um, well, he doesn't go down of his own accord. It's a classic first-term bunching situation. So you'd, you'd put all four back? Absolutely. There's no reason not to. OK. Seen it again here. Christina Turnbull taking a look at these angles. You know, like Lewis Bridger hasn't moved out specifically. There are three abreast there. They've just run out of room. OK. All four riders are back for the rerun. Let's just confirm that for you. All four riders back for the rerun of heat number three. So it will be Bridger and Nielsen and Nichols and Cook. Lewis Bridger, Kelf, how's he been doing? He had a year out of the sport last year, brought back into the sport here at Lakeside. How's he been doing? I think he's been doing pretty well. It's, uh, it's never easy once you've had a year out. It can take uh, a little bit of time to get back up to speed. And there's no doubt that uh, he's working awfully hard to do that with his uh, bikes. Having a look at Kim Nielsen there, just having a close inspection of his equipment, uh, just making a, a small change to the ignition timing. Uh, as Chris has been saying, it does look like the track has dried out a little bit quicker than they possibly thought. There's a bit of dust in the air, so uh, just taking the opportunity just to just calm the engine down a little bit before the restaging of Heat 3. Well, you saw the uh, score across the bottom of your screen. Pool 6, Wolverhampton 6, and here after 2, it's Lakeside 8, Bellevue 4. That's the latest from tonight's Elite League action. The boys are getting ready for heat number three, which will be coming up when we come back in a few moments' time. Welcome back to Live Elite League Speedway tonight and a good start to the meeting. Lakeside with a perfect start in Heat 1 with a 5-1. Jonsson coming through to join his partner Swiderski. Heat number 2, though, a clever move from Stevie Worrell of the Bellevue Aces in the yellow and black helmet colour. Saw him take the chequered flag. Then drama at the start of Heat 3. First turn incident, Scott Nichols goes down, all four back. Two heats completed at the Arena Essex Raceway. Lakeside hammers eight. Bellevue Aces 4. Now, would you believe it, after all the rain we've had, <laughs> we're just giving the riders a couple of extra minutes. The reason? The sunshine. Yes. It's glorious here. It's it quite is. low though, Kelvin, and it can be quite a distraction to the riders. It's, it's, as you come out of turn 2, if you just lift when you run a little bit wide and you look up to go down the straight, it just catches you in your eyes and you literally are blinded for a second or two. As soon as it goes down behind those trees, then we'll be on with the action. But it is quite a concern, and uh, we're just going to have a mini break as a consequence of that. Well, let's uh, have a chat with the two team managers now about the situation of the meeting so far. Here's Chris. Thanks, Nigel. Yeah, the sunshine, we don't see much of it. You know, the guys are not used to riding with that glaring in their eyes anymore. So uh, while we wait for the sun to go down, I'll have a quick word with the team managers. Mark, it's, I'd like to say it's been a good start. I guess it has. You've had a couple of big uh, four-point victories away from home, but that seems to be the problem. You don't have a home, but soon you will have. Yeah, definitely soon we will do, but uh, it's, it's been very frustrating for all involved. You know, it's, uh, we can see this great stadium there, this super light shaped racetrack, but we're just uh, yet to get uh, to spin a, a wheel in anger, but that'll come, and um, obviously we, we can kickstart our home uh, fixtures on Wednesday the 11th against the Robins, but obviously, yeah, we've had two good away wins, uh, Kings Lynn and at Leicester, um, and you know, obviously we hit tonight, so we've got to do a job. It's a great team. You've only had to make a couple of changes from last year, the team that uh, did so well. Uh, how much of a, a concern for you is the fact that you won't have a home, a home advantage, at least for a few meetings? 
Yeah, there is a concern, but I, I feel the way these, this, this unit um, sort of worked and gelled last year, and obviously we've, we've kept the majority of the team from, um, you know, from last year, that uh, the hunger that they, they show on the racetrack will sort of even that out for the, for the, the initial stages. So they're, they're a quality lineup, and I um, you know, just hope that they, they get to hold him pretty soon. But, yeah, obviously in Speedway, you know, having a home track advantage is a you know, major plus, but... Uh, yeah, obviously, winning away on the road obviously proves the boys are in a bit of form. How big an advantage is it, do you think, to keep a team together? As we said, there's only the two changes. And um, I mean, did you set out to do that for reasons to keep the team together, or, or was it just you know how the numbers added up? It's very fortunate that you with the averages and the numbers added up. But obviously, to have continuous, you know, continuity in uh, in any team and sort of that was successful is uh, pretty important to sort of keep that together. Uh, we were fortunate with the averages the way it panned out that we could do it, and we can obviously bring. You know, lost two and then brought two in and um, you know, we kept the majority of the team. But uh, we'll see how it bodes well at the end of the season. But so far, you know, it looks healthy. Great stuff. Thanks, Mark. If I can come to you, John. It's the uh, same again, really. It's been a good start. I mean, Lakeside perhaps not fancied to be at the top by, by, by everybody at the start of the season, but you have had a good start. Yeah, definitely. We, we're sort of working with a group of riders that we think we can get more out of and it's early days yet. You know, we're racing. I think this is the best team in the league, Bellevue, by a country mile, and I think their early results have shown that. And once they get up and running at home, I think you know they're going to be a club that could dominate, you know, British Speedway for years to come. Which hopefully we'll be there with them if we can get our new home sorted. Um, but we've kept, you know, three of our top riders from last year. Uh, we've got a little bit of strength in depth now this year, I think, which we didn't have last year. The reserves are starting to come along, uh, and I think that's what where we were, really were weak last year and hopefully you know that'll all go well for the rest of the season got off to a good start had an away win always bumps up the table a little bit and hopefully we can carry that through tonight one of those riders that you kept andreas johnson really seems to have mastered this place now i mean he knows every line he's chewing he won tonight that he's he just needs to be patient and he knows he can make the move yeah aj is normally on fire around here and he sort of inspires everyone else you know what you want is your big rider out in heat one he has a good ride everyone else feels the benefit from that and of course you know he's got a good disposition he's good to have in the pits laughing and joking with everyone and and him and piotr have, have made a really good pet both on and off the track they're doing a lot of traveling from the airport together and everything and i think that works you know everyone pulls that little bit more together when the group feels together and the work that Calvin, myself and all the boys have put in is starting to pay off and we know this is a big night, we want to get the win and, and this will set us up for the rest of the season. The number four position should be shared, doesn't seem to be at the moment. Richard Lawson's made such a good start for you guys to this season that uh, seems to have made that his own. Yeah, we're, it's unusual for a club to have a problem of you know too many riders. You know, Ed was our rider of the year last year, quite deservedly. I mean, he's here, he's keeping it, he's looking over the shoulders of all the others. You know, uh, he's come to every meeting, he, he did Wolverhampton for us, I thought he rode exceptionally well there, and I think his chance will come quite quickly. Uh, Richard has obviously been a star early doors, and, and if he keeps that going, he'll stay in the team. But you know, we're fairly flexible. If someone loses form, you know, Ed's straight there, and I've got tremendous faith in him. And you know, it's nice to have him around, and he's showing the dedication to be here, supporting the boys as well. Uh, we've also got uh, you know, Dennis Johnson and, and Ben Morley as part of the squad as well, and at different times we can drop them in. So we're trying to do something a little bit different that might get us through some of the the fixture clashes that have been a pain for British Speedway over the last few years. Great stuff. Thanks, John. Thank you. And the sunshine is going down, but uh, that is uh, the situation as it stands at the moment with uh, slight delay in racing because of the uh, visibility issue with the sunshine. The score at Paul, Paul 9, Wolverhampton 9. What a ding-dong that is with uh, Wolverhampton making a great start to the season with four wins out of four. And we see them on Monday live on Sky Sports when we go to Coventry. Coventry against Wolverhampton, a Midlands derby yeah. uh, on Monday evening. So looking forward to that as well. Just picking up on what John Cook was saying there about riders that are sharing roles. Edward Kennett, Richard Lawson, you know, and he's mentioned Ben Morley as part of the, uh, the standby yeah. for the elite draft riders. Um, you know, is this the first step towards maybe a squad system, Kelvin? I, I think it's something similar to when we had a doubling up ruling actually a few years ago where you actually had two riders that would share a role within the team. I think it's changed slightly because when riders have been doubling up in two leagues, they've expected to do all the fixtures. Effectively, this rule is allowing you to, to use a squad system to a point. And if a rider loses form, you have the opportunity to slip somebody else in. Let me ask you this question then. Is there any merit, and this has been debated many, many times in all forms of the media, 
is there any merit, say here, for example, at Lakeside, if Andreas Johnson didn't want to do a full season, is there any merit then in stretching it to having two number ones sharing, doing 14 meetings each? I think from that point of view, very much so. I think if there is a position within the team, it's the number one position where that role would work better than anything else because they they financially can afford to do that. They have enough commitments on the continent to come in and just do 14. I think for other riders further down the pecking order, it's not quite so attractive. So here we go with heat number three then. It's the rerun of heat three with all four riders back for the restart now. It's Lakeside 8, Bellevue 4. And uh, two heats gone a 5 1 to Lakeside in heat one, a three all in heat number two. Scott Nichols, the man who came down in the first staging of heat three. Yeah. And uh, he rode well in Sweden last night, actually, Scott. Flew he did. back in today for this meeting. He actually passed Nicky Pedersen last night in the Swedish league as well. Just to confirm that lineup for you. Nilsson off the inside for the Hammers. Craig Cook, gate two in yellow and black. Lewis Bridger goes off gate three in red. And Scott Nichols going off the outside in white. But it could be a big year for Scott. You know, there's no Ty Wuffenden at the British final, so he'll be chasing hard for another British title. And he's made himself available for the World Cup, which both of those meetings will be staged on his new home track. And I think that uh, Scott could be in for quite some sea season here, racing for the Aces and also racing for Team GB. Yep, looking very fit as well. Scott Nichols uh, certainly enjoying his speedway for sure, and uh, no well, doubt keen, like everybody else, uh, to see the Aces get their home campaign <laughs> up and running. Absolutely, they've had to be very fr fr patient, because the frustrations of seeing this wonderful new stadium and not being able to get on the track must have been tough indeed, but I believe very shortly they will be racing there. Here we go. Yep, heat number three it is with the restart, and they're away the first time of asking. The man in blue is Kim Nilsson, has that advantage. Nichols locks up the inside. Oh! Well, Scott Nichols pulled a really big locker there and Lewis Bridger had nowhere to go at all. This time I do think there could well be an exclusion. Scott Nichols, who uh, got away from the outside, then moved to the inside, but the bike almost turned inside out. And uh, in truth, Lewis Bridger had nowhere to go. I get the feeling after the big build-up that Scott Nichols could be in danger of being excluded. Well, we shall see. Here we see it again, the incident. Nichols did have the lead and was locking up on the inside there. It's now the bike just almost comes to a standstill and Lewis Bridger has had nowhere to go. Could be all fall back, but uh, there's no, no question that uh, Bridger could do nothing about it. You know, Scott's come to the inside there, just over locks, and the bike almost turns up inside him. And uh, in truth... Bridger, apart from riding up onto the centre green, could never have avoided him. Well, I'm glad that both riders are walking away from this because this is a classic case where... There, you, you can never see the know. bike almost going backwards, Nigel. Yep. Well, that's a classic case, isn't it, Kelvin, where it could easily be a broken collarbone? Yeah, a high side like that, very much so. Yeah, dislocated shoulder or a broken collarbone, it can really bite you. Well, Christina Turnbull is taking a look at this as we speak. And uh, will it be an all four back decision? And if somebody is to be excluded, it will be a decision that is the primary cause of the stoppage. And Scott Nichols is disqualified. Scott Nichols is disqualified from the restart of heat number three. There will be three riders only. And that is a blow to Bellevue. Christina Turnbull believes that Scott Nichols was the primary cause of the stoppage there in heat number three. Three riders only. And no doubt Mark Lemon, the Bellevue team manager, will have a word or two to say about that. Well, quite possibly, but uh, on the replays, you can see that Scott, who made a really good fist of it initially, he has a sneaky look to his left. He knows the opportunities there to go to the inside, but there, just momentarily, the bike overlocks, and uh, he almost comes to a standstill, and unfortunately, Lewis Bridger just cannot get out of the way. We've seen it several times, and, you know, he has that look. He reacts quickly. Now, now, yeah, the back tyre, where it's gone quite dry, and also the delay hasn't helped either as well. It's quite marbly there on the inside. Well, as I, as I said, Mark Lemon will have something to say about that, and he is with Chris Louie. Yes, he certainly did. He's been on the phone to the referee. Uh, what did Christina say? Uh, she just explained to me that Scott locked up and caused, uh, you know, Lewis Bridges to, to crash into him. But, you know, I explained, you know, it's obviously a tight track, you know, and Scott's line never really deviate from the contour of the shape of the track. So, you know, he has every right to choose which line he's going to take, but she just seen it a different way and that's it. So Scott's being excluded. 
I know you want to go and have a word with Scott. It's the second time he's been down, both times with Lewis Bridge at different parts of the track. Yeah, especially making such a good start from four, which you know, is you know, known here to be a graveyard, so he'd be pretty, pretty disappointed with that, but uh, that's the way it goes. OK, thanks for the comments, Mike. Yeah, Mark Lemon there then, saying he has every right to do what he likes. Scott Nichols is the man in front and uh, locking the bike up, but Christina Turnbull believes otherwise. Yeah, I think uh, he's playing his role as the team manager for the Bellevue Aces, Nigel, but there's no doubt that uh, Scott, who made a good start from the outside, made his move. Nothing wrong with that at all. Unfortunately for him, the bike just unexpectedly almost turned inside out as he got to the apex of the corner. And that really gave Lewis Bridger no chance here. You'll see he's perfectly under control. And now, there, as he leans off there, he is struggling to hang on to the bike. Almost comes to a standstill. And Bridger has nowhere to go. And uh, I suspected it at the time. And uh, he was under pressure. And the referee has seen it that way. So a frustrating start for those two boys. Do you not believe, though, Kelvin, that many referees would have just put all four riders back in there? It could have happened, yes. Could have happened that way. You wouldn't have been totally surprised. But I just felt that the way the bike almost turned inside out there, he caused the stoppage there. You know, there was no way that Bridger could have avoided him. So uh, we've had two heats completed, uh, two stoppages for heat number three. And uh, we've had a slight delay because of the sunshine, would you believe, as well, after this <laughs> start of the season. Oh, the irony of it all. Um, but we will get uh, running very shortly. Lewis Bridger with a few running repairs to get back racing Well, yeah, again. quite clearly the equipment will need some uh, attention and they're working furiously in the pits, I'm sure. Um, it's an opportunity for the lakeside now, Hammers, to gain an advantage here with Kim Nielsen, who had made two jet-propelled starts on the inside. The two-minute warning we can just hear has gone off in, uh, in the background, so riders will now be making their way to the start. It's a tough call, um, but uh, these, are, these things happen. Uh, not the ideal start for Scott Nichols. He's bit the dust twice in the first corner. And, uh, but this is a tough night, and the home team will be looking to take advantage. This is maybe a little bit of good fortune for them. Yeah, well, if they do, then uh, they'll open up a handy lead in the early stages after just three heats if they get a race advantage here. Mm. That would do them quite nicely. A uh, lot of pressure on Craig Cook here, the man in the yellow helmet. This is Lewis Bridger we're seeing in red, back in the sport after a, a year out. And Craig Cook now is the, the well, lone yeah. Bellevue rider with all the pressure on his shoulders. He's a lot of pressure on his shoulders, and he doesn't know this track. Um, he hasn't raced here, so the fact of the matter is he'll be desperate to try and get this race under his belt. Um, gate two, as Chris was saying, looked quite good on the start line there, so he'll be hoping to utilise that. But uh, Kim Nielsen so far... Although he hasn't completed the race, he certainly has made two good starts from the inside. So um, Cook, the sole representative for the Bellevue Aces, coming out in uh, what has been a, quite a drawn-out affair for Heat 3 now. Um, he'll be hoping, and Mark Lemon particularly, be hoping to keep it down to damage limitation. Three points for Cook here, and they would have got out of jail in Heat 3. Yep, so Heat number three it is then here. Third time of asking for this one. The three riders are up at tapes. Ready for action here. No Scott Nichols, remember, he is excluded. And here we see the lineup then, the revised lineup with no rider off four. It's Kim Nilsson off the inside in blue. Craig Cook goes off gate two in yellow and black. And Lewis Bridger goes off gate three in red. Pressure on Cook off gate number two. He is a lakeside sandwich on the start line. <laughs> Can he drop that clutch ahead of the rest and get well, a three all for Bellevue? I tell you what, when we watched him ride at the end of last season, when he was winning all those big heats in the playoff finals against Grand Prix riders like Heat 13 and 15, he can drop the clutch at the right time. He's proven it. I don't think he's quite in the same form he had at the end of last year. Quite possibly just through lack of racing, Nigel. But uh, there's no question that Cook, at the end of last year, proved that he was ready to win the big races. Here we go. Heat number three, eight, four, late side lead. And it's a superstar from Kim Wilson off gate one in the blue helmet. It's taken Cook out wide and Bridger has cut up the inside. And late side are on a 5-1 now. What can Cook do about this? It's a great start from Nielsen. Bridger holding the inside line. Here comes Craig Cook around the outside. It's a stunning move from Craig Cook. Now he's going to take up the charge and challenge Kim Nilsson, but it's oh, got wide. Down. Disaster for Bellevue! Absolute disaster. Cook was hunting them down, gave it absolutely everything, and the red lights have just about come on now because Craig Cook's machine is buried into the air fence, and now it looks like a gift 5-0 for the Lakeside Hammers. Cook well, paying wonder... the price maybe for just giving it too much there. He tried awfully hard. It was a great move down in turns three and four to get the better of Lewis Bridger. He came charging into turns one and two as Kim Nielsen moved out. He was seen again. Cook riding
Hitting hard around the outside, finds that little bit of extra grip, swoops around the outside of Bridger, then tries to do the same as he comes into turns one and two. Kim Nielsen's running wide, he just runs out of track and buries himself into the uh, air fence. I get the feeling that the red lights didn't come on straight away, and the riders were actually almost passing um, uh, Craig Cook as he was still lying on the track, and I wonder if that would be awarded um, because they did complete the second lap. But Craig Cook gave it absolutely, absolutely. The race has been awarded. You are spot on, Kelvin. The referee, Christina Turnbull, has awarded the race with a win for Kim Nilsson and Lewis Bridges second. There's some medical attention for Craig Cook here, and that's the last thing we want to see. It's a 5 0 to Lakeside. What a start for them. Yeah. Uh, with Nilsson and Bridger over Cook and Nichols, who didn't land a blow there. It's 13 points to four in favour of the Lakeside Hammers. Two, a 5-1, a 5-0 and a 3-all. But Bellevue just right out of luck in heat number three. Nichols out, Cook out of the race as well. well but now let's hope he's going to be OK. That's the most well, important fingers thing. fingers crossed for Kate Cook. I just sense he may have just been riding a little bit too hard there. Maybe the frustrations of not racing regularly and he'd sort of been passed by Bridger up the inside initially. Made a great move in the bottom corner. Really did have a lot of speed as he came in to start the second lap, but just ran out of room going around this uh, top corner. Hasn't raced here, and unfortunately came off second best there. Yeah, that's the last thing we want to see. Uh, his father is there as well with him, just taking a look at things. Scott Nichols alongside him as well with the uh, medical staff here at uh, Lakeside Speedway. We see George Carswell and Chris Morton, Bellevue management there with the team boss, uh, Mark Lemon, just taking a look, and let's hope that... Uh, very shortly we will have Craig up on Shame. his feet. Shame, because yeah. he's a big hitter, isn't he, for the Aces, and uh, they were looking for him to really come on strong. I'll tell you what's a shame as well, Kelv. That was a cracking race developer. It, it was, did, yeah. He'd done a lot of hard work to get past one lakeside rider. He was picking up the challenge on Nielsen. We were, we were deprived of a fantastic race there, weren't Absolutely. we? Absolutely, and uh, he was going to be the entertainer in it. Kim Nielsen, for the third time of asking, makes the start from the inside. He pushes uh, Craig Cook wide. That allows Bridger up the inside, and they're on a 5-1 as they go down the back straight. But this is when the fireworks really start, because Cook looks at uh, the room around the outside and takes full advantage of it. There's a little bit of extra grip, and he fires himself into second place, carrying lots of speed as he comes into the first and second corner, but runs just too wide, clips the bottom of the air fence, and clearly... There, it, it looks fairly innocuous, gets thrown clear, and he must have just caught himself awkwardly because he's kind of getting up there. Yeah, but he uh, went down again after that and uh, had medical attention. The Bellevue boys, Joe Jacobs and uh, Stevie Wall taking a look at it. Now, let's get the late, latest track side. Here's Chris Louie. Thanks, Nigel. Yeah, in the pits with Kim Nilsson. Kim, one race, three good starts, not a bad. No, it felt good, you know, even though I made changes in between every rerun, uh, you know, it, it feels all right. And I, I think I'm, I'm there now where, where I want to be. And uh, I think the bike is working good. It's hard to tell because I've only ridden a lap so far, but, you know, it feels all right. Just three races gone and already you, you seem to be riding quite wide. So the, the dirt line seems to be effective already. Yeah, it seems to be quite quite concrete on the inside. And it was just that top layer on there for the first heat, really. And uh, that seems to go away, and I think it's going to build up with some dirt on the outside for a few heats, and uh, it will take a few few more heats, and then we will be back on the inside, I guess. Nine points uh, lead just after three heats, but uh, Bellevue, not the sort of side you can sit back and feel too confident with. No, they are very strong, you know. They haven't even had a home meeting this year, and, uh, yeah, they have already won meeting. So, uh, yeah, we need to keep, keep this up, you know, for the whole meeting, really. Great start, well done. Thank you. Thanks. Well, Cook on his feet, which is great to see. Um, mm. Looking uh, battered and bruised, it has to be said. Let's hope that's all it is. They are just uh, checking up on him as a precaution. And uh, he's got that big meeting on Saturday as well, oh, the Grand Prix qualifier. The, the GP qualifier at Kings Lynn on Saturday will be in a terrific meeting. Uh, if you're in that vicinity, go along and watch it, because it really will be a tear-up. But uh, Cook must have just caught himself awkwardly there, because... In real time, it didn't look that no. bad. And quite often, those are the ones where you get hurt. And he's taken his time to get to his feet. As I say, he's made that super move around the outside of Lewis Bridger. He comes roaring here on the outside, just runs out of track, clips the airbag and goes down. It doesn't look that bad. Um, but he must have caught the motorbike or he's fallen awkwardly because uh, he's really uh, struggled to get to his feet. 
Well, he is up on his feet, but he is still um, having medical attention. He's now up walking back somewhat gingerly back towards the uh, pits yeah. area. It's good to see, but he, he doesn't Quite look... Quite clearly, yeah. he must have caught himself as he came away from the bike because uh, that's a man that's feeling quite uncomfortable. And I wonder if it's his, uh, his knee uh, that he may have jarred or something else higher up the body. Um, but anyway, let's around hope the that he's OK. Yeah, somewhere <laughs> around there. Um, let's hope that he's OK. No. Um, that's the most important thing. Scott Nichols and Craig Cook then have both crashed here in the early stages of this meeting at the uh, Arena Essex Raceway. Craig Cook hobbling back towards the pit gate. There's an ambulance coming out to offer him some help, I think, now um, towards well, the uh, periphery of the track. As I said, you know, quite often some of the, tra the incidents that uh, don't look that spectacular can actually have severe consequences, and uh, there's no question that the paramedics want to check him over, and he is in quite a lot of discomfort there. And uh, I would suggest that um, from the look of that, I wonder whether how much, how much further, how many more races he's going to be able to take because um, he, he is in a lot of pain there. Yeah, very much so. Um, it would be a huge blow for Bellevue if uh, Craig Cook is ruled out, of course, because he's such a key rider for them. Absolutely. Well, I picked him out as the man to watch for their team. So, yes, it would be a massive blow for them. Well, it's not been the start to the meeting anybody wanted, really, maybe apart from Lakeside. They're in a comfortable position after three heats, but riders crashing and getting hurt like Craig Cook. Let's hear from Scott Nichols now. He's with uh, Chris Louie. Yes, Nigel, let's get an update, first of all, on Craig, most importantly. How is he? Uh, he's a bit tender. He jarred his ancestors pretty hard, bless him, so uh, he's a little bit of discomfort there and no one really wants to go down there to see if it's all right at the moment, so we'll let the medics take care of that one. We'll leave that to the uh, trained medical staff then. I think so. uh, um, that was actually his first couple of laps around here. I was talking to him before the meeting. He was quite looking forward to it. Obviously, some similarities to, to Edinburgh, which is a track he knows very well, so disappointing start for him. Yeah, real disappointing. Uh, he was really winding up. I thought, you know, he looked good, but uh, you have to turn really tight here, and uh, obviously it caught him out. So, uh, you know, across our fingers that he can be fit to take part in the rest of the meeting. I don't know if he can, but... Um, you know, I think he. I don't think he made that mistake again. But yeah, it's a massive blow for us. It's uh, not the start we wanted, but you know, it's early days. We just have to dig deep and do the best we can. You've been down on the track a couple of times, right. tested the surface uh, once on the inside, once on the outside. How are you? Okay. I'm fine. Yeah, just pride's dented a bit. It's never nice to hit the deck. It's uh, you know, it's a real tricky, tracky. You have to turn really hard. Um, thought it was a bit unfortunate to be disqualified in the second one, um, but. The ref's a ref, you can't argue, you can try, but I didn't bother. Um, I'll just free group and uh, see if we can get things dialed in for the next one. Thanks, Scott. Thanks a lot. Yeah, good interview from Scott Nichols. I um, hope to see him in good form later on in this meeting, and Bellevue is certainly going to need him as well. Yes. Um, but um, we're going to get on with the action now with uh, uh, heat number four is coming up, and uh, fingers crossed that uh, Cookie will be OK, although quite clearly a delicate injury as far as Craig is concerned. Mm. And uh, now well, we move on to Heat 4. We've got Brothers Worrell coming out here, and uh, for the Bellevue Aces, they're going to need them to really come good. Uh, they've got uh, the in inside gates, and I just sensed that uh, Mark Lemon had studied the gates. Uh, Chris Louie picked up on it, and the fact that they were looking for gates 1 and 3. They fancy gates 1 and 3 later in the meeting to come good. They've got gates 1 and 3 here in Heat 4, and uh, they're nine points down. And they need to take advantage because they don't want to let Lakeside get too much of a momentum going here because it's been a good start. I know it's been a bitty start as a meeting, but it's been a good start for the home team. Yep, heat number four coming up after this race, by the way. If Bellevue are ten or more down, they can nominate a rider for double points under the tactical ride rule. But they'll be hoping that that won't apply. But it doesn't get any easier for the Aces here in heat number four with Lawson and Kerr. But they do have... Gates 1 and 3, Stevie Worrell goes off the inside in yellow and black. Gate 2 in blue is Lewis Kerr for the Lakeside Hammers. Richie Worrell goes off gate 3 in white for Bellevue. And Richard Lawson going off the outside in red for Lakeside. Big race for the Worrell boys here. It is indeed, and uh, they're going to have to make the best of the uh, gates 1 and 3. Um, uh, Richie Worrell's first ride, as is, is uh, for Richard Lawson. Both have had to be very patient with the delay, the sun delay in Heat 3 and all the restarts. So those boys have been waiting quite some time for their opening ride. Track has dried out. It's a little dry anyway, but it has dried out. I fully expect them to put some water on at some stage. But, uh, yeah, the Bellevue Aces have had a poor start, 
They need to just settle the ship here with a heat advantage. Yep, team number four it is there, green lights on. And it's a good start here from Steve Oil on the inside gate. Now Kelly's brother Richie joining him on the inside. He's gone down in that first turn. It's a heavy landing. Will he get up or will it be another red light stoppage here? The race is going to be stopped yet again. This is only heat number four. We have another stoppage and that time... I'm pretty certain Richie Worrell will be disqualified. Went down all on his own there. Yeah, unfortunately for him, he hasn't got around the first corner, and uh, I tend to agree with you, Nigel. He just uh, overdoes it. Very similar. It's got very dry. It's loose on the top surface. He runs in there a little bit tentatively, then has to turn the bike quite hard. You can see there from those pictures there how loose the top surface is, and the back tyre has let go on him. And uh, he has been uh, excluded from the rerun, so all the pressure is now on his brother. Well, um, there Lucky. have been three heats and one part of heat four, and already we have seen three Bellevue riders, Nichols, Richie Worrell and Craig Cook, with uh, exclusions by their name. So there are, only, there are only four Bellevue riders that have completed a race, um, three exclusions. This is a horror start for Bellevue. It has to be said here, Lakeside ready to pounce here with Lawson and Kerr. Yeah. But once again, Steve Worrell, who won heat two, is going to need to win heat number four for Bellevue as well. Yeah, and he's up against stronger opposition, but um, Steve Worrell is capable and he's got the inside gate. He made a super start in the initial stages before his brother got it wrong in the first corner. Uh, but he's on his lonesome and uh, Bellevue are finding it tough in these early heats. And it, uh, it, it's tricky, there's no doubt. And Scott Nichols, in his interview with Chris Louie, was explaining how hard you have to turn the bike here. And it caught him out, and it certainly caught out Richie Worrell. It's loose on the top, back tyre just loses grip with the surface. You just can't stop the bike coming round on you. So um, uh, can Steve Worrell take care of the Lakeside boys here? So here we go, heat number four then. Second time of asking now, with Steve Worrell off the inside. and. Lewis Kerr going off gate two, no rider off three, and Richard Lawson going off the outside in red. What can we say about this start to the meeting? It's uh, We've almost been going an hour, and we've only had three completed races. It's been one of those nights, Kel. So far it has, yeah. It's such a shame because it's a, been a lovely day, and uh, with the sun delay and then all these restarts, it's been a bit, um, well, far from ideal in truth, but uh, let's hope we can get into a bit of a rhythm in the upcoming races. Second time of asking. Yep, here we go, then heat number four, and uh, they're off and running, and it's Stevie Worrell off the inside in the yellow and black helmet colour. Watch out for Lawson around the outside in red. He's going to take up the challenge, and he's got the better. He's got the drop on Worrell going into turn three. Third place in blue is Lewis Kerr, but Worrell's coming back for more on the inside. This is a good race going into lap two. What a move there from Steve Worrell, like he did in heat two, just hugged the inside, got the better of the opposition. Super right to get the better of Richard Lawson, who really has been flying around the Arena Essex Raceway. Warren out in front. If he can stay there, this will be a superb performance from the Bellevue men. They've had an awful start tonight, but uh, the man from the Aces is doing the business out in front. Yeah, riding nicely here, Steve Roll, but again, Richard Lawson won't give up. He's going to come back for more, going into that final lap now. Steve Worrell is going to put seven points on the board in total for Bellevue, and he would have scored six of them <laughs> after four heats here. Steve Worrell keeping the Aces flag flying and takes that checkered flag, and uh, it does mean that uh, Bellevue are not in tactical territory. They're not ten points down, and fair play. Stevie Worrell Whoa. having a real go here for Bellevue. What a smashing ride that was. It looked uh, to all intents and purposes that Richard Lawson was going to really clear off into the distance, but uh, Mr Worrell had other ideas. He hugged that inside like he did in Heat 2. He uh, got the bike hooked up brilliantly to come off the corner and got himself back to the front and stayed there. That was an excellent ride. Stevie Worrell, the race winner then, with Richard Lawson second, Lewis Kerr was third, Richie Worrell disqualified. It's a three-all, and it means that it's Lakeside 16, Bellevue 7, four heats gone. There we see it again. Initially, uh, Worrell makes a good start from the inside, swooping around the outside and down the back straight for the first time. Richard Lawson hits the front, but as uh, Worrell did in heat two, he's able to turn that little bit tighter, gets the drive off turn four, and fires himself back to the front. That's a really nice ride from him, plenty of throttle control, and good motorcycle skills here shown by the man. Worrell again, here we see it as they enter turns three, is able to just get the bike turned that little bit earlier, wheels in line and gets himself back to the front 
And as hard as Richard uh, Lawson tries, he can do nothing about Steve Warren, who's out in front. Super speedway from him. But what news on Craig Cook of Bellevue? Here's Chris Louie. Yeah, let's get an update from the man himself. Craig, we were talking before that race, and uh, it was obviously your first laps around here. It looked like you were settling down just until that crash. Yeah, I just didn't realise how, uh, how tight it actually was. I just ran out of room, you know, running really deep there. And, uh, yeah, I just ran out of room and uh, the fence crept up on me. But, um, yeah, I'll probably uh, too small a sprocket in that one. Maybe go up a tooth and just take, get it revving a little bit more and uh, help me turn because I think I was carrying a bit too much speed. But, uh, anyway, I'm all right after that. I thought I'd lost one of my little friends downstairs, but uh, he seemed to have come back. We heard it was a delicate injury, but um, I mean, the good news is you're, you're going to continue and, and you're, and you're going to continue and work at it. It was all right, apart from the crash. So uh, we'll make a couple of changes now and um, see if we can get the aces back in this. The team needs you. Good luck. Cheers. Good news for the meeting that Craig Cook is able to continue. Good news for Craig Cook, first of all. Good news for Bellevue and good news for the meeting. Excellent. And Craig Cook, by the way, has never ridden here because he's always been riding for Edinburgh on a Friday night. That's Lakeside right. have always been on a, on a Friday night. So yeah. there you go. Frank Swiderski, Jacobs and Mia is your lineup for heat number five here. Uh, can Bellevue make gate one count here? Uh, or will Mia and Swiderski be able to... Oh, oh what on earth is going Frank's on here? Frank's the times. What is that all about? Oh, that's a dreadful move. Uh, is, is, is that a burnt clutch or something? I mean, that, that didn't look like it. Just looked like Max Frick dropped the clutch too early. Uh, hadn't got the excuse of looking across somebody else because he was on the inside. And just looks like a, a case of being too impatient. Yeah, just drops the clutch too early. Goodness uh, me. And uh, that's unfortunate. And Mark Lemon must be furious in the pits because they've had a disappointing start and they can ill afford to throw points away. Do they go Max Frick off 15 metres? The rider in white, Max Frick, disqualified. Um, well, they can so... put him off 15 metres, can't they? Yeah. It'll be interesting to see whether they... Uh... Well, we can tell you that Steve Worrell will be coming in as a replacement. So, Stevie Worrell is going to be in his third ride in five heats. And probably the right decision. Worrell has won two rides already. Um, he scored six of the seven points that uh, Bellevue have in total, which is remarkable statistics in itself. But, uh, yeah, Worrell just preparing himself for the rerun of Heat 5. We are having quite a difficult start to the night. I think that's probably understating it. But, yeah, for all sorts of reasons, it hasn't got going this meeting. But the Bellevue Aces there, Max Frick, that will be so frustrating for Mark Lemon. You know, they need to get going in this meeting. He had the inside gate. And inexplicably, maybe nerves or, I don't know, impatience or whatever it is, just drops the clutch a fraction too early. Yeah, not ideal. And as I say, well, you were quite right, uh, Mark Lemon, the team manager, will be pretty annoyed about that <laughs> yeah. because it needs a solid all-round Bellevue display from now on to recover from this. Absolutely. It's been a disappointing start, to say the least, for the Aces. They're a team full of confidence, um, full of quality. And so far, they haven't been able to display their qualities because several of their riders have been thrown out of races. So um, they're going to need, you need riders in races. Steve Worrell has been their star. They, uh, he's the reason that they're uh, just the nine points behind. If he, if he wins this and it's a three-all, uh, Bellevue will be on ten points and Worrell will have scored nine of them. Which is remarkable. <laughs> his pay packet, he'll be delighted with that because uh, <laughs> he's piling up the points at this early stage of the night. But... Uh, um, overall, the Aces will be um, disappointed with the way they've started. There's still plenty of racing to go, of course. We've got 11 10, races. 10, 10, 11 races to come. Yeah. So, yeah, they, this could very well change very quickly. But um, so far, it's been tough going for the Bellevue Aces. So, heat number five it is. And Max Frick uh, disqualified and replaced. Uh, they could have gone off 15-metre handicap with Max Frick, but um, Stevie Worrell is coming in. This is the ninth start of a heat and it's only heat number five. It's been that kind of night where it's been frustrating so far. An hour into the meeting and only four races completed. Uh, one thing about it, the sun has gone down. So no <laughs> excuse there now. There's no issues coming out of turn two anymore. That's no issues certain. at all. Just... Stevie Worrell off the inside. Piotr Swiderski off gate two in red. Joe Jacobs gate three in yellow and black. And Rob Mir going off the outside in the blue helmet colour. Swiderski's been good so far this season. Yes. What about Rob Mir back in the sport, Kelvin? How's he been doing? Yeah, he started really well and then uh, has found it uh, difficult subsequently and just finding the right setup. It's never easy when you've had uh, a couple of years out. 
and I think Robert has found it difficult to know what he wants to ride. I do believe he's riding a new engine this evening, so he'll be hoping that uh, that's right. There's no question that uh, he's very determined to make his mark. Here we go, hit number five then. By the way, Paul leading Wolverhampton 22-20 at Wimborne Road. That's the very latest there. Here at Lakeside, 16-7, the home side lead takes run up very quickly there. And Stevie Worrell has made an absolutely superb start uh, off the inside gate. So Steve Worrell now has the lead. It's Swiderski second, third in blue is Robert Mir, but I thought the tapes ran up particularly quickly there. Yeah. It was green light go, and Worrell has the lead, and he's on target for a ninth point, and he's on target to score nine of Bellevue's ten points from five heats. Well, this will be his third win, wouldn't it, uh, of the evening? I thought he might have got away with a bit of a roller there as well, in actual fact, Nigel, but it was a slightly odd start, but uh, Steve Worrell will not be complaining about that at all. He's keeping his team in it. He's enjoying a great night. Swiderski settled in second place, Rob Mayer in third, and Joe Jacobs is out the back. But Steve Worrell is being a star here. He's keeping his team in it, and he's riding beautifully. He's making starts. He's comfortable on the bike. Bike set up is spot on. Yeah, right to the Newcastle Diamonds in the Premier League. It's super Stevie Worrell, and thank goodness for Stevie Worrell from a Bellevue point of view. Three rides, three wins, nine points, yeah. and Bellevue have only scored ten. Five heats gone. Kelv, you thought maybe yeah. he might have had a slight roller. I thought the referee put the tapes up particularly quick. It was almost like green light. Well, go, it was, but it, I guess we need to see a replay. Well, we will do, and uh, Steve Worrell won't if he was rolling, but uh, no red light came on, and he got away with it if he was rolling. It just, I just sensed he may have moved a little early, but Steve Worrell, nine points to his name, is riding very well. Yeah, uh, Steve Worrell, the winner, with Piotr Swiderski second, Robert Mia third, and Joe Jacobs, who is struggling tonight. He finished at the back there. It's a three all and it's Lakeside 19, Bellevue 10. Still a long way to go. Ten heats to go for Bellevue to get themselves back into this. Here we see the start. Yeah, and um, just looking down on the inside. No, he just makes an absolutely jet-propelled start. Brilliant start from him. And I thought he may have rolled. That's how good he was away from Watch the start. Now. How long before the take? I know we're in slow motion here, but it just seems to me as though they went up quicker than they have been doing. And they may have done, but... Um, uh, Steve Worrell will be hoping they stay like that all night because <laughs> he's made an absolute beauty start. He's nailed it on the inside. Swiderski had no answers. He tried hard. Me around the outside. But uh, the three all um, uh, just keeps the Bellevue Aces within touching distance. And we'll be keeping our fingers crossed now that we can get a run of races in without too many stoppages. But Steve Worrell, what a night he's enjoying. Nine out of nine for him. Yeah, riding beautifully. Stevie Worrell. And uh, only one, how can you believe this, right? Five heats gone, Steve Orrell has scored nine, Max Frick has scored one, and no other Bellevue rider has scored a point. Remarkable. Joe Jacobs has failed to score from two, Craig Cook and Richie Worrell uh, have uh, been excluded, and Scott, three riders excluded, Richie Worrell, Craig Cook and Scott Nichols haven't well. completed a race, and Zagar finished last in heat one. Yeah, he did, and Craig Cook is uh, probably just going to come under a little bit of pressure with the time. Um, uh, furiously getting ready. It's an uphill push there, so uh, his dad there will be blowing a little bit by the time he gets to the top of the, of the pits. Um, uh, Zagar is up at tapes in gate two for the Bellevue Aces this time. Cook will go from the outside. Lawson, who got beaten by Worrell just uh, a few moments ago. Zagar, who uh, rode in his home Grand Prix at the weekend, didn't enjoy a great Grand Prix in truth, and uh, will want to forget that one. Um, uh, got excluded in a race and just didn't really get up to speed but we know his qualities he is an outstanding rider when he uh, really gets it together yep heat number six it is Lewis Bridger going off the inside in red for the Hammers gate two in white is Matty Zagar the Bellevue number one can he deliver the goods here Richard Lawson gate three in blue Craig Cook outside in yellow and black recovered from that injury sustained in his opening ride his first ever visit to Lakeside uh, because he has been riding for the Edinburgh Monarchs in the Premier League and um, Lakeside have traditionally been a Friday night track so and whenever Bellevue have been here he hasn't been here Zagar makes a good start now lovely start with Bridger second Lawson third now Cook is going to try and take up the challenge there's hardly any room down that back straight you've got to give it to Craig Cook he puts it on the line he's coming around the outside now here and has got the better of Bridger and Bellevue are on a 4-2 Cook goes wide and Cook is going to take up the challenge on Richard Lawson oh! what a move from Craig Cook oh, what a move from Craig Cook 
don't think it was completely under control. Zegar's out, <laughs> out in front looking fabulous. Craig Cook, what a dead devil move that was to get the better of the late side hammers. Richard Lawson now coming under pressure from his own teammate. Zegar's cleared off out in front, but Cook is a hero here. He's under pressure with a lap to go. Can he hang on? Yeah, Zegar has gone, but Cook is under severe pressure from Lawson and Pritchard. They're both having a go at him. Into turns three and four for the final time. Can Cook hold out for Bellevue? Down to the line. 5 1 to the Aces. Game on here at Arena Essex. That has brought this meeting to life for sure. And you have to admire Craig Cook. He has got great guts and determination. What a performance from Cook. What a ride from Matty Zegar that was as well. And Bellevue are right back in this meeting, Carl. They are indeed. Zegar made a fabulous start from gate two and just cleared off out in front. All the fireworks were going on behind him with Cook, Bridger and Lawson swapping places near enough every corner. But Cook came out in second place. What a ride that was. What a way to bounce back. Yep, stunning move indeed from Craig Cook. Zegar, the race winner. That's what he's there for as the number one. That's what he's paid to do. Absolutely. Craig Cook, though, last to second to join him for a 5-1 yeah. race of the night so far. It is easily, and Zegar hits the front there and just powers down this back straight. Craig really Cook, sick. total commitment from him. Hardly any room at all, and it's a little bit waving, a bit bumpy out there. Riders really are having... Determination. What a performance from Cook. What a ride from Matty Zegar that was as well. And Bellevue are right back in this meeting, Carl. They are indeed. Zegar made a fabulous start from gate two and just cleared off out in front. All the fireworks were going on behind him with Cook, Bridger and Lawson swapping places near enough every corner. But Cook came out in second place. What a ride that was. What a way to bounce back. Yep, stunning move indeed from Craig Cook. Zegar, the race winner. That's what he's there for as the number one. That's what he's paid to do. Absolutely. Craig Cook, though, last to second to join him for a 5-1 yeah. race of the night so far. It is easily, and Zegar hits the front there and just powers down this back straight. Craig really Cook, sick. total commitment from him. Hardly any room at all. It's a little bit waving, a bit bumpy out there. Riders really are having to hang on to their speedway bikes this evening. From the aces, as you rightly say, Nigel, just the five points in it now. They're well and truly in it. What a move. Craig Cook is a hero for Bellevue. He was halfway to South End at one stage. <laughs> it's now Matty Zagar. Great stuff with Chris Lewis. Matty, it's been a frustrating start for the aces, but uh, that race is going to settle things down a little bit. Yeah, I know, it ain't over, uh, of course, the uh, beginning was uh, far away from the planned uh, beginning, but, you know, uh, it's sport, so uh, we got to keep fighting. Before that race, just two Bellevue riders had actually scored any points. You had ten points before that one. Uh, Steve Worrell had nine of them and Max Frick one of them. How can you explain it? I mean, four exclusions, you know, what was going on? Uh, you know, it's... Uh... If you got to be screwed, you got to be screwed. You know, it was situations with, uh, where somebody had to be excluded. So, uh, unfortunately, our riders made mistakes and they were out. So, you know, I didn't have the best first heat day as well. So, we have still have uh, some heats to go. So, Perhaps a lack of meetings playing a part a little bit? Uh, I wouldn't say so, you know. Uh, nobody's really, I would say, uh, in a full racing mode yet because there's been so many rain-offs, uh, cancelled meetings, and uh, I'm pretty happy also uh, that I, I had Sweden yesterday and today uh, Bellevue, uh, wow, well, Lakeside. But, you know, I would like to do more meetings as well. Keep going, well done. Thank you. What are you doing, Steve-O? Here, number seven, Andreas Jonsson going off the inside for the Hammers in red. Uh, game the inside gate has been working well. Nichols will be very keen to get round that first corner this time, having <laughs> failed to negotiate it in his opening ride. But he's more than capable, and he knows this place very well, and he's uh, performed extremely well here in the past. Here we go. Yep, he's number seven, and is there. Now, who's going to hit that first turn? Jonsson is there. He's looking for his partner, Kim Nielsen, as well, around the outside. Nichols tries the inside run, but Nielsen with a stu superb run around the outside, and it's a Swedish duo, Andreas Jonsson and Kim Nielsen, and I'm certain now there'll be a little bit of team riding coming into play. Yeah, Andreas Jonsson on the inside, hugging the inside, Kim Nielsen on the outside, both of them made very good starts 
The Lakeside Hammers here bouncing back. Scott Nichols working overtime back in third place. Worrell's out the back. He failed to score in his opening one and is struggling in fourth place. But both the uh, Lakeside boys now running wide. Scott Nichols trying so very hard in third place but just can't quite land a blow. This is a good ride, good race here for the Hammers bouncing back after the big 5-1 in the previous race to the Aces. Yeah, Kim Nilsson, an unsung hero for Lakeside. This is going to be his second win on the spin. That's good work from Kim Nilsson in the blue helmet colour. Heat number seven, five one back for Lakeside. They move nine clear now, and Bellevue cannot use a tactical ride for double points because you have to be ten or more behind, yeah. and uh, you can only use it up to and including heat number eleven. So they only have four more heats if they go ten behind to use double points. What a result. That's a big result for Lakeside. Absolutely. Kim Nilsson, the winner. Andreas Jonsson was second there, played a great role for the Hammers. And third was Scott Nichols. It's a 5-1. Nilsson, the hero. Lakeside 25, Bellevue 16. Well, they took advantage of gates one and three. Jonsson immediately having a look to his right. He sees his compatriot, Kim Nilsson, coming roaring around the outside. The captain of the Lakeside Hammers doing a great team riding job there to enable Kim Nielsen to get to the front. Nichols back in third place. Works awfully hard, but just can't quite land a blow. But Kim Nielsen and uh, Andres Johnson of the Lakeside Hammers come up with a very important 5-1 there after the Aces were really beginning to work their way into the meeting. Yeah, great stuff then from the Hammers. 5-1 in Heat 7, just as Bellevue were getting back into it. Heat number 8 is coming up when we come back in a few moments' time. ever appearance at the Arena Essex Raceway. Richie Worrell going down as well. Max Frick touching the tapes. It's been a catalogue of errors from the Bellevue Aces, but they did get a 5-1 in heat number six with that move from Craig Cook to join Matty Zegar. But then Lakeside bounced back with a 5-1 of their own in heat number seven, which you just saw before the break. Good match here. Lakeside 25, Bellevue 16. We've had seven of the 15 races. It was dragged out early on with all the exclusions, the stoppages, the crashes, the delay because of the sunshine, would you believe? But we've got going, Kelvin. It's not bad. You have. The last two races have been uh, pretty good, actually. Two five ones, flip-flopping. Got to say that Craig Cook has been uh, the centre of attention for all sorts of different reasons, but his performance in the last ride, his last ride, was absolutely out of the top draw. But all credit to the home team. They came back with a very useful 5-1 in heat number seven, and uh, they maintain that nine-point lead. Yep, very much so. Uh, now let's hear from Chris Louie. Thanks, Nigel. Andreas, uh, important to hit straight back in heat seven with a 5-1. You've actually been involved in both the 5-1s that uh, Lakeside have got, so it's looking good for you tonight. Yeah, it does. Uh, I know Bellevue have been struggling. They had a lot of bad luck so far, and I think they're going to come, come strong now. So, uh, you know, we really, really need to be on it to make some starts. John Cook just called a team meeting. What did he have to say? Uh, we can't get past our own, own track, so <laughs> I'm to set a bike up today, hook up a little bit better around the track. I notice you're, you're working down there on your own engine, maybe just moving the initial a little bit, looking for a little bit more. Not a bit, a, pretty, a lot actually. I moved it off to the first heat and the track is so much slicker than it normally is around here and it's really dusty. We haven't been able to put the, the water on as, as uh, we normally do, so uh, it is different and just trying to... Uh, Soften it down a little bit. It seems uh, a little bit too aggressive for me today. Race off. Well done, Andreas. Thank you. Yeah, he's riding well, Andreas Jonsson. Doing a good job for the side. Bit of in and out at the Grand Prix and then in Sweden last night. Not the best of meetings, but he's been pretty good for Lakeside so far. Yeah, he's had some spectacular performances in Britain so far in the early weeks of the season. He will be disappointed with his Grand Prix because uh, he went there full of confidence and has had probably done more meetings than a lot of other guys that had in that meeting on the continent. The weather has been just as bad as it's been here. So um, uh, I think he's scratching his head a little bit there, but uh, he's ridden well so far tonight. Just explain to viewers that aren't familiar with Speedway, somebody like Andreas Jonsson lives in Sweden, uh, based in, uh, in the Polish League, the Swedish League, flies in to Stansted for lakeside meetings, but he has got bikes here that are kept in the UK by a full-time mechanic. Is that how it works? Yeah, you just said it. Nailed oh, right, it in, okay. in one. Yes, absolutely. You've got a bikes in each country, flies in and out to Britain, two bikes based here with the mechanic, 
and then he'll have a team, one team with the one vehicle that will double up for Sweden and Poland. They will flip-flop between those two countries and almost certainly that team will then go on to do the Grand Prix as well. Well, that's life as a top-line speedway rider. Life in the fast lane. Here we go with heat number eight. Richard Lawson goes off the inside in red. Stevie Worrell is a replacement for Bellevue. He comes in for Joe Jacobs off gate two in yellow, and he's unbeaten with three rides and three wins. Lewis Kerr, gate three in blue, and Max Frick, who has gone through the tapes in his last ride, needs to behave himself in gate four. He does, and uh, they're going to need him because um, every time they look like they're just about to get back into the meeting... Uh, and then something inexplicable happens and Max Frick touching the tapes, who is a quality rider, I might add. He's a rider that's going in the right well and Bellevue have uh, hold him in high regard. Um, he touched the tapes when he probably had the best gate, which was gate one. So he needs to redeem himself now. He's only got the one point from two outings. He needs to come up with a big performance coming from the outside. He does indeed. Heat number eight coming up then here at Arena Essex. But Lakeside Hammers, 25, Bellevue Aces, 16. And away they go from the inside with Richard Lawson hitting that turn superbly. Worrell tries the inside run. Now round the outside in blue is Lewis Kerr. What a ride for the uh, Lakeside man. And now Worrell tries the inside run on Kerr. Steve Worrell in for Joe Jacobs here. And he's charging hard, putting the pressure on. But Lakeside are on a 5-1. This would be a terrific result for Kerr if he could hold out from a Bellevue point of view if Worrell can split them they will be 11 down and they can use a tactical ride in heat 9 well what a start it was once again the inside gate proving to be so fruitful Richard Lawson who had got passed earlier on by Craig Cook is out in front Steve Warren